Hello, I am N9 and welcome back to Reentry, an orbital simulator. We are doing the next campaign mission for Gemini today. So we hit select, scroll all the way down to the bottom here and we'll notice we have another mission here, the walk in space. The new spacecraft is working well and orbital maneuvering has been proven in the previous flight. It's once again your turn to head up there and perform the first ever extravehicular activity attempted by the US. I'm so excited, guys. Once again, the USSR has beat the US in performing the first ever EVA in Voskhod a few months ago, but this is a critical maneuver we need to master for Project Apollo. The walk in space, oh my gosh. All right, extravehicular activity, uh, aka spacewalk, is mandatory in Project Apollo, where astronauts will need to leave the spacecraft and walk on the moon. This mission is designed to support this and learn how you are able to work outside of the spacecraft in Earth orbit. Oh boy, it's been maybe a solid week since I flew last. Let's see if I remember everything correctly. Launch. Good day, N9 Gaming. How's everything in Aurora? I bet you were excited to get up there again. I am. I am indeed. The spaceship flies like a dream. I wonder when they'll ever let you give it a try. <laughs> Don't get cheeky on me, N9. Just heard the word. I'm scheduled for the next flight. A long duration flight. Sounds good, Patrick. Okay, we are ready here. Let's get this thing going. The backup crew has set up the capsule. Roger, Aaron. Let's do this. Okay, complete the pre-flight checklist and press proceed when ready. All right, we just need to turn turn the batteries on. Computer on. Uh, the tape on. Make sure everything is armed and our fuel cells are on. Uh, our suits and all that, and uh, make sure the D-ring is there. Right, right. So uh, first of all, yeah, our D-ring is there. We're going to want to slap our uh, batteries on here. Make sure that all of these are on as well. And we're going to start our... Uh... Nope, that's actually not the fuel cell. I don't know what X over means, but I don't think it really has a function. We're going to start our fuel cells here. There we go. Uh, yeah, that is on. Awesome, awesome. Uh, let's see, what squibs did it say we wanted to have on? It wanted us to have all four of these on. And, uh, the booster insert squib. Alright, you got it. Let's make sure, okay, computer's on pre-launch. Let's flip that to on. Make sure our display is on. Numbers are changing, that's a good sign. Uh, let's see, we're gonna need suit fans number one and two. I'm gonna hit these pumps on here. That is good to go. And what else am I forgetting here? Radiator is on bypass. That is correct. Uh, computer to do pre-check completion. Then we're going to want to hit start. And then... Uh, actually, it wants me to hit start right now. Right? Nothing changes. So we started the computer up. Uh, our FDAI, that is moving to position. Awesome. And then wait for the pre-check completion. Wait for FDAI to align with the predefined roll target. About 30 seconds. It has done so. All right, and then we can switch this to ascent. And now we are all good for launch at T minus six minutes. Roger. All right, go through the mission briefing and use time scale towards ignition. Roger will do. Okay, we've set up the spacecraft. Now let's go over our mission briefing. In this mission, you will be launched into an initial elliptical orbit of 161 by 225 kilometers. After insertion, you will spend a few minutes getting familiar with attitude control in both direct and rate command mode. This will simulate how the EVA controls work. I'm pretty familiar with that, I believe. At uh, mission elapsed time 60 minutes, you will perform an EVA with the task of retrieving a backpack located at the rear end of the space shift. What? That's awesome. I just gotta, you know, forgot the backpack back there. I gotta go grab it, <laughs> retrieve it. Press the G get button above the backpack. Okay, yeah, yeah. After the EVA, we will return back home with whatever goods were in that backpack. I wonder what they're hiding back there. Okay, EVA controls. Use the handheld maneuvering unit, HHMU, which is like a, a tiny little like RCS pod that that's in your hand. It's like a gun. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Uh, I wish Kerbal Space Program had that. They just have the jetpack, which sometimes doesn't work in RO, uh, but I digress. Uh, you're able to translate forward backwards using normal translation controls and then orientation. So forwards and backwards 
is the only translation the, the uh, handheld thing has. Understood. Once you move in a direction, there is no force that will stop you, so you will need to counter with the opposite direction to stop or change direction. Avoid hitting the capsule with too high velocity, or else Newton's third law will add force back to the ship, and it will start drifting. And good luck. Luck. Luck, Aaron. Can you believe this briefing? I don't need luck. We don't need luck where we're going. We're in good hands, right? Yeah, we're, we're in good hands. Let's do this. Our platform is aligned. I do kind of want uh, some more light up there, though. Let's see if I remember this. Yeah, that gives us better visibility of this. And the D-rings are, in fact, installed. They're right here. Roger that. All right, Titan. Show us what you can do. Roger that. Please don't throw an abort at me, game developer. <laughs> you better not. You better not do it, Petrie. Wait, wait till later. I want to I want to step outside of the spacecraft. Don't abort. <laughs> T minus 20 seconds. <sighs> Prepare the ascent checklist. I don't think there's any really active things there. Clock is running. We're on our way to orbit. I love the sound of that. All right, we're on abort mode one up to 15,000 feet. All right, 500 feet. Pitch program at about 500 feet. Let's go, let's go! One thousand feet. We're feeling the G's. 1500 feet, abort mode 1-2. Mark, 50 seconds, you're looking good, eight. We are looking good, we're looking good. Got 40,000 feet. I am taking off the D-rings. We no longer want to eject. We will just stop the rocket if something goes wrong. Both engines are performing nominally. We're at less than half fuel in our first stage. Up to 65,000 feet. We are approaching abort mode two. Time now, abort mode two. Atmosphere is blood away. Engine's still running good. Up to 90,000 feet. We're gonna lose our radar altimeter pretty soon here. And there it goes. Oh man, you can see the stars. I imagine it'd be actually really hard to pull my neck away from the seat here uh, with the G-forces behind us, which are rising to, uh, is that two Gs right now? We're gonna be rising a little bit closer to three. But oh, we're getting ready for a staging here. Board mode two and three are practically the same thing. And I believe I am prepared to do either should the need arise. Here's hoping that that doesn't happen. Our alignment looks good. We're about to stage. T plus, two minutes and 42 seconds. Engine out. Solid staging. Roger staging. Roger staging. Second stage is now pushing us all the way back into orbit. We have a good light burning through that. Our Gs have gone down significantly. That would be one hell of a change. Just being plastered to our seat here, then just suddenly just thud forward and then a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter on the way out. But now we're slowly going to start feeling the G's again as our second stage burns through fuel. Curious on the handheld maneuvering unit and how it works while weightless. I, I love, I love this. <laughs> we're currently riding a, 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 an, ex, an, a controlled explosion behind us 
into space. And we're just casually like, yeah, I wonder how that handheld device works. And we'll find out. 30 seconds of fuel. Should be enough to see how it works and, you know, grab the backpack. I'm more curious what they have in the backpack for us than how it works. <laughs> Good thing that backpack has some additional fuel. Oh, well, that explains a little bit of what it has. The handheld unit is used to translate forward and backwards in the direction you look. Attitude is changed using normal attitude controls. Yeah, procedures are to turn off the ohms and venting the cabin before opening the hatch and exiting the craft. Correct. Turning off the ohms is down here. Venting the cabin. Is that? No, that's to repress. Venting the cabin is one of these up here. Cabin vent. It's the middle ring. We throw that down and then we're able to open the hatch and that's going to be so cool. Roger that. Yes, but first, let's get this into the target orbit and complete the ascent. Check the systems. Yeah, uh, we're looking good. We're, we're a tiny bit of a roll to the left, it looks like. Our pitch is going slightly below the horizon. I think that's fine-tuning our initial orbital insertion. Gs are going on three Gs. Our fuel is burning. Engine two is running nominally. Preparing for insertion. Yeah, all seems well. All seems well. We're going to enable ohms and make sure to zero out our initial orbit, although I don't really think that we'll need to. It should be pretty close, and if it's not pretty close, there isn't really any point to a specific orbit. Uh, it will just change our time to retro slightly if we are slightly off. Now that's something that we can have a ground control deal with. We don't got to worry about that up here, Aaron. Don't you worry. Pitching down a little bit more significantly now, but we appear to be on course. We're facing prograde. All seems well. All seems well. Roger, Seco. All right, Seco and separating the spacecraft. All right, jettisoning our fairing our covers for our horizon scanners. There they go. All right. Seco, roger that. Separate the stage and follow procedures. Okay, we need to separate the spacecraft from the LV and remove the sensor covers. Already done. Separation will enable zones to zero out the IVIs. Uh, well, sure, let's do that. Platform. I don't think left and right is really going to change here. We're pretty much zeroed out. Let's roger that. Proceed when ready. All right, performing the insertion checklist. Let's do that insertion checklist. I believe we got to turn off the batteries. Uh, ohms are off. Yep. Uh, the fuel cell stacks are on and they are powered. So we can go ahead and turn off our main batteries. All four are set to off. Uh, we're going to want this squib on safe. want to set all of these retro rocket squibs to safe. Uh, we're going to want to turn on our, our scanner. That's already on a primary. I didn't click that. Did you click that, Aaron? Are you clicking things, Aaron? You can just sit there and don't click anything, all right? All right that's already on primary. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I have to do with the scanner. Uh, sequencing, uh, sequence light test. We'll do that. And uh, some fuses and two things. Skipping the checklist here to close our secondary O2. We see that went up. All right, let's do ourselves a light test. We got amber. And we've got red green. And once again, it's hard to read these on bright unless I really get close to them. So we're going to set our sequence lights to dim so they are a little bit more readable. Light test complete. O2 complete. We've got some things here. We want the ohms heater. Uh, I'm going to switch that to... Well, let's see, they're on. But do, do they want it off? I don't exactly know. I think maybe they'll want it off. Cryo quantity will be off. Um, Yeah. I think that's uh, that's it. So let's hit run. Yep, we did that. All right, that's it. Roger, insertion checklist. Press proceed when ready. All right, checklist complete. Mission control spacecraft configured for orbital operations. 
we will do a perform the EVA at mission elapsed time, 60 minutes. So let's start a, uh, oh, no, we don't have to worry about that. Let's just be counting down. When uh, that's reached 40 minutes, we're going to set our radiator to flow from bypass. And then 20 minutes later, we will get ready for uh, EVA maneuvers. That's going to be awesome. We will start with the rate command flight mode. Oh, the flight mode test is actually right now. We will start with the rate command flight mode. You know what's interesting is we launched at pretty much sundown instead of the morning this time. I wonder what the reason for that is. All right, roger that. All right, so let's hit up, let's hit the ohms and we're gonna set these to this to rate command. All right, that's set to rate command and ohms are on. Proceed. Uh, proceed. Proceed, proceed, clear. Yeah, Roger. No, oh, okay. So what raid command is, is it'll give me manual control. However, here, let me show you. Uh, let's, let's yaw. It's like stock SAS in Kerbal Space Program. So I can yaw. I'm going to hold yaw and just yaw us over to the side. Rate command is stopping the speed of this rotation. So I'm holding it down, but the jets are no longer firing because we're, uh, we're, we're stopped at this speed. It's like a speed limit on how we can slow down or how we can move. And I let go and it will stop our rotation entirely. The same happens for all of our movement here. Rolling and it stops on its own and then slight pitch and it stops on its own. That is what rate command does. It commands our rate, it, it, it keeps it in check. Uh, roger that. Spend 60 seconds getting familiar with how this mode functions, then move over to direct mode. Well, I already know how it moves, so. Over in direct mode. All right, in this mode, you are fully responsible for all attitude forces yourself. So in this mode, let's hit roll, right? It lets me rotate a lot faster. So if I need to get somewhere in a hurry, we can do it. and. Now that I let go, it will keep this rotation. It's not going to stop us from rotating. This is this is how I like to do maneuvers. And then, you know, you come to a stop on your on your own accord. And it might not be perfect, but you know, you can always just put this in rate command to stop the rotation and then back. Right. And it's very I mean, it's WASD. So like the slightest of movements, it's not going to be extremely subtle, right? It's not going to be perfectly subtle. However, there's another mode called Pulse. That's the third one right here. This one, you have to tap the key. You'll, you'll probably hear my keyboard in the background while doing this. You have to tap the key uh, to actually move around because just pressing it and holding it doesn't do anything. It's just a tiny little pulse of movement. This is how you have very fine control of attitude and translation as well. This will be used when we need to rendezvous with things to really have very, very small movements to keep ourselves approaching a target or next to a target, what have you. I don't know what sort of rendezvous missions are in here. If it's anything like real life, we'll be rendezvousing with another Gemini and Jaina with docking. I don't know when those will actually happen, though. But those are the, the modes of manual control. Let's put this back to direct. And then... Yeah, rate command, bring us into a standstill. So we're good, roger that. Direct command set, maneuver to prograde attitude and maintain prograde attitude for about two minutes. Well, do I have to? I kind of want to watch the sun go down. So I'm going to maintain retro attitude, ground control. I'm going to I'm gonna sit here and watch the sunset. Roger that. So they want me to do this for like two minutes. Uh, we're in direct. So yeah, what is this? 246. Let's time warp to uh, 426. I don't remember the number I just said, actually. There we go. All right, switch to sharp end forward and take a small break before we start preparing for the EVA. We will start at mission elapsed time, 60 minutes, just above Australia. Sweet, we're going to see Australia beneath us. That's going to that's gonna be fun. All right, so it wants me to switch to SEF, which is sharp end forward, which is this mode right here. We switch that to sharp end forward. Now our nav ball is going to display where that needs to be. If we switch this over to attitude. Well, this is indicated we need to go down and right to actually get us to facing prograde. 
Uh, and we'll keep that on platform there. I just want to watch the sun go down because this is a very, very peaceful moment in the flight. And uh, I think it's worth observing. Roger that. Then we'll move over to sharp end forward. And we'll take a break until we have to step out of the capsule. Which is going to be just so much fun. I'm, I'm really happy that we're doing this mission right away. And there it goes. The sun is beneath the horizon. It is now night. So there isn't really a checklist for, you know, nighttime operations. But what I want to do is dim the light just a little bit. Uh, not take the cabin lights. Give ourselves, let's see. Oh yeah, we're going to want red lights up in the front. So we dim the lights just a little bit. Give yourself red lights in the front. This is nighttime that I remember from Mercury. All right, it feels like home. It feels like home. So, sharpen forward is set. That sets our nav ball, but it doesn't set our autopilot. So let's move over to that, just using the uh, FDAI. Just by pulsing yaw, we can see that our rotation on the horizon, which this line should be a horizon, if our sensors are working correctly. They are set to primary. Our scanners are hopefully operational. You can see, there it is. Line that up, and then pitch down. And line that up. Now, it's not going to be perfect, but it'll be close. Now, here's also, if we're in manual control, where using pulse right here is actually also pretty useful because it's just tiny movements. Um, this is a not very sensitive sensor right here, but we can set it to be by clicking this. And now even our tiny little pulse movements really show how far we are off from the desired attitude. Roll slightly. And we should be facing prograde. Now to verify this is actually prograde, we'll set our attitude control back to platform. And platform is set to sharp and forward. And you'll notice we're not moving anywhere because we're already here. So that is that. Controls are very easy and the EVA controls, so I'm told, will be pretty much exactly the same thing. It only bothers me slightly that we're one foot per second to the right from our intended orbit, but our orbital shape is fine, so everything is going to be fine. So now that we are enjoying our first night here in space, let's time warp ahead until it tells me to do more things, because I want to step outside. Something I didn't do is switch our computer from Ascent to Catch Up. I don't know if this is really necessary, but I'm, uh, I'm going to switch this to Catch Up. And just for the hell of it. We are at T plus 60 minutes from our mission. Looks like we are in daylight as well. I'm going to leave the red lights because I think it's cool, but we are going to get a little bit more light in here because it's daytime. Let's wake up. Are you ready for your EVA? Hell yes, I'm ready for my EVA. I was just thinking about it. We'll let mission control know we are ready. We are ready to start the procedures. Absolutely. We just had a slight delay. We are ready for you. Shut down the ohms and follow the EVA checklist. Well, the EVA checklist is real simple. You shut these down and you uh, you pull this. And now our cabin pressure is going down until it reaches zero. Can be very fun. Let me double check that though. I don't think there's really anything else that we do. Let's see. Pre-EVA. Ohms close. Pull the cabin vent, wait till cabin is zero. Then push it back to normal. I was going to do that. And then you open the hatch. Yeah, that's it. All right. So it is, uh, it's resting there. I think that's as close to zero as it's going to be. So let's pull that back up. Now, this isn't going to increase until we hit this right here, the repress handle. And that will repressurize our cabin. Roger that. Use the run feature to complete the pre-EVA checklist and exit the vehicle. Okay, it wants me to actually hit run on here. So, yep, I did that. Did that. All right, so now... Check this out, guys. We've opened the hatch. Look, it's space out here. We can just step outside. Oh my god. Goodness, that is that is absolutely amazing. All right. Proceed. 
Press EVA to exit the vehicle. Here it is. Press. Oh, looks like Gemini is in a bit of a spin. No, okay, it stopped. Performing EVA. Okay, I've stepped out of the spacecraft. We'll give the handheld unit a try. Be careful and spend as little fuel as possible. Try to get that backpack if you can, but that's optional. Make sure you return back to the capsule in time by using the COM tools menu and press enter. COM's tool menu. Oh, this. Yeah. <laughs> Roger that. I'm going to take that off because it's ruining my immersion. I'm drifting outside of the capsule now. And, uh, you know, the inside has appeared to completely glitch out. I can't see the interior. And maybe that's for the best. I don't know. Roger that. Use the HHMU to translate forward or backwards in the direction you are facing. You can peek around using the right mouse button. Oh, shoot. I didn't know you could do that. Look at that. This is the Gemini spacecraft. We're floating outside of it. This is incredible. And a backpack is supposedly over there. I really wish my track IR worked right now because right now it would be phenomenal to just move my head and be able to see around here. So are we, we're past Af uh, Australia, isn't it? That should be the shore of Australia. Oh well. But this is the gun thing I was talking about. This gives us attitude control and four back control. It's kind of interesting. But our backpack is over there. So let's go grab it, shall we? Now, according to Newton's law, every action must have an equal and opposite reaction, right? So if I rotate left, I need to rotate right to fix that. If I translate forward here, I'm going to need to translate backwards to slow us down again. So we'll keep facing this direction since the only translation control I have is where I'm facing. But you can see here. Our backpack should be here. I wonder. <laughs> it's so dark. It's so dark that I can't see. All right. So we should have stopped our movement pretty much. Let's spin back around. Uh, roger that. Comm's working great. Try to avoid hitting the spacecraft too much or else I'll start getting to, to get sick in here. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. All right, let's move forward. I'm going to hold the same. And move backwards. Yeah, I can't see anything. Feels like a roller coaster, most likely. I'll give you some space to give that backpack retrieval a try. Return inside when ready. Will do. The backpack is probably right here. We've only used five seconds of fuel. So grab. Now we have 85 seconds of fuel. Okay, so we must have grabbed the backpack. We must have. So I don't want to get back inside yet. Look at all the fuel we have. Let's go this way. Let's go this way and dangerously watch the Gemini spacecraft drift away from us. Or us from them, I should say. Now, I just might uh, have bumped the spacecraft a little bit. And you can see that the Gemini is currently experiencing some sort of roll. Now, it's nothing too dangerous. I should still be able to step inside perfectly fine. But I am noticing that that's happening. Is this New Zealand? I don't know my geography as well as I should. Um, that shouldn't really be a problem. But hey, let's get back to the vehicle uh, because we're going to be able to see the underside here. And I want to see if that backpack is physically there still. It's the only way I can verify that if I actually grabbed it. All right, it looks like there is no backpack. There's no backpack that I can see, at least. Hold on. Let's go closer to the vessel, please. Having attitude, or sorry, having translation controls in all directions would be really beneficial at the moment. Because right now, like if I need to adjust my attitude slightly this way, I got to do this. And then move back. And then... Stop the rotation. 
and account for the rotation of Gemini, which is a bit weird. It seems to be almost speeding up. So let's try to get back inside now. <laughs> I would love to just float out here forever, but due to the rotation of the spacecraft right now, I would like to re-enter, please. So let's do that. Oh, it says Aurora on the side there. That's really fun. Aurora, as you may know, is what I call the spacecraft I fly in this simulator. Well, it should be really relatively easy to get our butts back inside here. You can see we're, we're approaching the spinning craft. Now we simply hit enter and back inside. Welcome back. I made it. What did you do in here? I don't think I, re I mean, it's possible, but I don't really think I bumped the spacecraft and we're spinning. We're spinning quite a lot, but you know, I made it back inside. I made it back inside. <laughs> Roger that. That was fun. Mission Control, I'm back in the capsule. I would say the uh, handheld worked well, as long as I used it relative to my center. Gravity. Roger, we're glad to hear that. Had a few blue faces down here. Can't wait to get a full report at the debriefing. Yeah, the briefing is going to tell you to add more translation controls and be confused as to why we're spinning this much. But uh, let's close the hatch. Right? We're going to close the hatch. We are going to... Repress the cabin. This will slowly increase. And we are going to re-enable ohms. And get us back on track with sharp end forward, shall we? Alright, it's not going to mess with rotation. That's fine. Yaw and pitch have us sitting at sharp end forward. Thank you, autopilot. Also, it's been T plus 40 minutes. Radiator to flow, please. I forgot about that little button there. Okay. Roger, will do. Let's close those hatches and get this cockpit back to orbital operations mode. Complete the post-EVA checklist using the run feature. I believe I already have done it. Let's see. Post-EVA. Run. Close the hatch. Cryo selector 1. Oh, we want to verify that we have oxygen. Pay attention to O2 level and wait for cabin pressure to reach 5. Yeah, O2 level has only dipped down a little bit. Cabin pressure is holding at 5 PSIG. All right. Repressurize. Uh, we're going to set this back to closed. Should be good. Proceed. Make note of your cryo oxygen levels. Yeah, we're good. Proceed. Awesome. Let's pressurize this cabin again. Done and done. Uh, we appear to be rotating still. Hold on. Let's... Let's set this to rate command, right? And get ourselves facing the correct. All right, we wish to splash down in the Atlantic, which, uh, you know, hold on, give me, give me direct control. I wanna, I wanna face how I wanna face here, which is prograde with no rotation. Nah. Now, as you can see, I'm not the best pilot with WASD, but. It's close enough. And then we'll hit rate command. And that's pretty much sharp and forward. At least it should be. Yeah, it should be. All right. We wish to splash down in the Atlantic, which is during the night. I don't think that's intended. The sun may have not been where it needed to be. I'm not sure. Uh, so retrograde burn should be on the west coast of the US. Again, using the orbital cursor on orbit view. F3, drag the slider so its position is above the coast, which I now realize the red dot is where we are. Let's see. Ah, middle mouse button can move us around here. Right, right. So the red node is where we are, right? We are moving this way, and now we have a lot more than two minutes to prepare for our... Uh, <laughs> to prepare for our deorbit burn. So we're going to do this here. And apparently they're having us land in the dark, which I wouldn't recommend, to be honest. Hmm. Hmm. We're landing in the Atlantic. I wonder how mad they would be if I changed our landing zone 
to the Gulf of Mexico. How mad would they be if I did that? I don't know where in the Atlantic Ocean we landed before. It could have been just off the coast of Florida here. It could have been like way out here. But I, I almost kind of want to want to try to land in the Gulf of Mexico. Press down when ready. Hmm. There's a lot of opportunity for us to land in the uh, on in, in, in Texas and in Mexico, accidentally in Florida. We'll follow the rules. I want to try to land in the Gulf, but we'll follow the rules. I'm going to pay attention if I remember. Uh, if we start the burn right, right in the Gulf of California, where in the ocean we are going to touch down at. And that way, next flight, I can land us in the Gulf of Mexico. But we're not going to just wing it. I'm going to take a look at where this is and where we splash down somewhere over here. All right. Then get back into the cockpit view. Oops. That is not the cockpit view. This is the external view. All right. There we go. And request our retrograde should happen at the orbital cursor point. All right, retro at orbital cursor. Unable to set time to retro. Verify computer is running and DCS is powered. Uh, start. All right, let's try that again. All right, yeah, I never started our computer. <laughs> that should be fine. All right, time to retro has been updated to 16 minutes and two seconds. Please double check core 19 and make adjustments if necessary. All right, sure. Let's check. Uh, let's check core one nine. Read out nine hundred forty four seconds. So yeah, that should be good. That's uh, what fifteen minutes. I can't do math right now. Uh, yeah, unable to set time to verify. Yeah, yeah, we did that. Yeah, done. We should now have a retrograde burn time. We will start retrograde checklist ten minutes before ignition. Roger that. Yep, can confirm that is 15 minutes. So, when this... Hold on, let's just sit down. Ha! Huh. Alright, yeah. This is going to be 30 seconds in the future. When this hits zero, it will be 30 seconds until our retrograde time. So, we will be preparing to come home then. A short flight, a short flight, but a quite fun one. So, checklists. Uh, we're going to do... Let's see. Oh, memory core. Oh, nice. I don't know if this is new or what, but take a look at that. It shows us all of the commands that are here. Nice. So hold on. Hold on. Uh, that's clear. IVI, Delta V, Z, X, and Y. Y should be up, down. X should be left, right. And Z should be forward, backward, right? So 26. One, right? That's that's to be fine. Twenty-seven, nothing, and twenty-five, nothing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So if something like this fails, we have the OBC to take a look at that. That's really cool. Row program delta roll if not using zero nine. Zero nine ascent azimuth will automatically calculate roll program and sets number ten. Interesting. Uh, ascent guidance. Set target inclination. Hmm. Interesting. I don't exactly know what situations those are for. Uh, but anyways, I was here looking for uh, five minutes to retro. Because I don't remember everything about this one. All right, we timed warped ahead to T minus five minutes on accident instead of T minus 10, but that should be no problem. Something we do need to do is set ourselves to blunt and forwards. Let's get ourselves moved up over there. And now let's start our checklist for pre-retro. If I can find it, that is. There, five minutes to retro. So we're gonna wanna set our primary pumps off on both sides here. Uh, indicate retro attitude. We are going to need to press this one. There we go. Let's do that. Batteries, we're going to test them. All right, so battery test, that is BT on this dial here. Uh, BT right there. And one, test to 24 volts, correct. Two, test to 24 volts, correct. Three, test to 24 volts, correct. Four, test 24 volts, correct. All right, 
switching all of our batteries on, we are now shutting down fuel cells. I think this gets shut down. Maybe not. But it, it's getting... The fuel cells are in the equipment section. It's getting jettisoned behind us anyway, so I might as well shut them down. Oh, look at that. Fuel cells off and stacks off. I was correct. All right. Ohms, uh, I'm pretty sure that we need to... Let's disable the ohms real quick. Let's open up our RCS. So that should be controlling us now. Mm, doesn't appear to be... Let, let's just double check. Let's go into direct. Mm, I believe RCS will work when things are decoupled. Don't appear to be working at the moment, but we'll do that. We'll separate the ohms line. Oh, wait. Haha. <laughs> This is why we have an RCS button right there. All right, so if we go to direct. Yeah, yeah, there's our thrusters. We have thrusters the whole time. All right, separating the ohms line, separating electricity. You can see this battery power is green, indicating our batteries are in fact on. There's a reminder light. And then up next is separating the adapter. All right, we have separated from the adapter. If we go into this view, we can see that that is in fact falling behind us now. Oh, that's so cool. All right, that is free. We can go ahead and close all of these. And we need to set our computer to uh, re-entry. And you can see here, the computer's not gonna be on because the tape is gonna be uh, running. All right, perfect, perfect. Retro auto fuse is gonna be on. I think manual is on as well. That is correct. Set timer for five minutes. Oh, that's already running. That's already run. Don't you worry. Uh, blunt and forward is already operational. Enable RCS checklist. Well, we already did that. Yeah, these are these are open. Enable RCS checklist is open. We uh, appear to be facing retro. Let's see. I don't know. Our, our, our FDAI appears different. Well, that's right. It's not actually showing us blunt and uh, forward here. What it's showing us is re-entry. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Going to go to back. All right. So at 30 seconds to retro, we are... Uh, retro rockets are going to be armed at 30 seconds. When this hits zero, it'll be 30 seconds to burn. So we'll arm our four retros there. We're gonna arm auto retro, uh, our, our auto retro something or another. We're gonna hit that. Then after one second after retro ignition, we're gonna fire. Okay, okay. Our core 19 here is not reading out anything. I did have to make a quick save, quick load because some friends come came over for a second. Uh, I don't think that really messed anything up, though. Other than that, let's take a look. Uh, well, our our oxygen and hydrogen, that's going to say zero for our cryo because that was in the equipment section, which is no longer with us. Our ohms fuel, RCS fuel, and we can see we're good on RCS fuel here as well. We're going to keep that up. Oxygen levels are good. Pressure is good. Temperatures look okay. Uh, we're approaching... 30 second mark. I'm going to do this a little bit early. Flip all of those on. And we'll click this in just a moment. Other than that, that tape is still running. I don't hit start on the computer. That is just something that happens passively, I believe. And we will jettison retro. I, I think it wants me to actually run this. Ah, we want that to be on. All right. Yep. And those fuel cells. I thought I powered these down. Oh, I set them to warm up. I see. I see. Proceed. Proceed. All right. Going through checklist now. Checklist complete. Adapter is separated. Two minus 30 seconds. All right. Click this. Our retros are firing. We are in retro attitude. Okay. Retros are firing. Awesome. Sequence starting. Excellent. Retros are burning. Perform the retro jettison checklist when they all shut down. Burn lasts about 20 seconds. Hold on. We can just go ahead and... Stop that. Perfect. All right. Uh, we were supposed to click this one second after. I, I once again neglected to do that, but they fired perfectly fine. Anyways, jettisoning our retros. They are away. Complete the post retro jettison checklist. Will do. Let's see. Post retro jettison. 
All right, retro power. Set that to safe. Gonna set all four of these to safe. I think we set these to safe too. Landing squib, we're gonna want to arm that though. Arm that. Those are open. Those are set. When aux tape is green, computer start. When aux tape is green, I mean, it is green. So we're gonna hit computer start. Although I don't necessarily think that that's what it means. I think is when it's not green anymore, we can hit computer start. I don't know. Uh, perform the reentry HF checklist. All right. So HF control. Um, the it's somewhere over here. <laughs> Radio antenna select is going to be reentry. I think this was supposed to be on adapter. That's interesting. Switch this to HF. Switch this to HF. Radio mode A or B. I think that that's fine. Let me hit run here. What does it mean? Ah. That is what it wants. HF antenna X EXT and then antenna select to re -entry. Okay. Sure. We just set them some things randomly. Hopefully that's fine. <laughs> Getting ready for atmospheric re-entry. Verify D-ring. That's right. We want that in, I suppose. No, it is already in. Okay. Roger that. Good luck. Will do. We should be okay. We, sh we should we should be okay let's run this power that okay we're good we're good here we're powered we're coming back home everything should go okay we are not holding re-entry attitude oh it appears we may be moving here Hmm. This does not seem correct. It is trying to face us to prograde. Uh, this is not updating. Setting the computer to re-entry. While this is not updating. This is causing us to go into a spin. And I'm not entirely sure why. Platform align. Navigate to the attitude using the window reference. Set platform to cage. Set attitude control to plat. Gyros will align to body reference after five seconds. New zero zero attitude will be current orientation. Okay, that's that's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. Let me let me just take a look at it again. Yeah, so give me direct control. Well, that's very powerful. Okay. What on earth? All right, all right. Pulse. Uh, ray command. It's gonna be ray command for this. It's gonna work best. Ray command is not allowing me to move. All right, direct. We're gonna want to try to face retro. Our FDAI appears to not be operating correctly. So we're basically going into this completely blind. At least concerning our instruments. All right, using the window reference, this appears to pretty much be This appears to be pretty much be uh, blunt and forward. I'm thinking it's close enough. No, it's not perfect because these are powerful jets for some reason. Uh, we're going to set our attitude control to platform. Wait five seconds. And uh, theoretically. Hold on. Start? Ooh, I can start that now. Theoretically, uh, we'd be good here. So if we set this to blunt and forward. Uh, yeah, once again, autopilot not doing it for me here. Oh, there we go. All right, we got this back. We got this back. Okay, okay. So there isn't like a re-entry platform. That would have to be 
the computer. Right? We set this to re-entry. It's not going to do anything for us here. So we'll have to do this. And hope that this is an okay attitude to hold. We really have nothing else to go by except for the FDAI here. So really, really hoping for the best here. I'm going to kill the lights just a little bit. And we are going to time warp ahead until we hit the atmosphere. That appears to be happening right now as the sun is going down. Once again, I don't know if that is entirely accurate or not. Should be okay. Oxygens are good. Our propellant is good. We're at T plus one hour and 40 minutes into this flight. We're finally coming back home. No longer time warp, so all we gotta do is sit back and wait for the plasma. Alright, we're feeling some G's now. It's slowly increasing and the plasma is moving around our vessel. And we can use our RCS to make sure our attitude is right where it needs to be. Hold on tight. Ugh. <laughs> we got this. We got this, Aaron. We're coming back home, perfectly safe. It's a very fast re-entry with this. Aurora, do you read? I do read. This is Aurora, loud and clear. Do you read? Loud and clear. Roger that. We're on our way back. Follow the landing checklist and prepare for drogue release. Copy that. Preparing our drogue as soon as we see that light. Great to see you. We have a visual. Welcome back. You see us already. That is awesome. Waiting for Drogue. I mean, we're a bright shining light across the night sky at the moment. That is pretty hard to miss. If I had to be perfectly honest. Oh, maybe it's not night. It's, it appears to be day. Okay. Our light is on. Drogue deploy. This light is a... Bad idea when that light is red and we can barely see it. <laughs> and there she flies. Roger that. Preparing our main shoot. Roger Drogue. We made it back, Aaron. Uh, you appear to be phasing in and out of existence. Uh, but we made it back, don't you worry. <laughs> main shoot deploy. Set attitude and prepare for splashdown. Roger that. All right. This is pretty much mission success here. We're gonna set our attitude. Let's go. Apparently some sort of rope contraption actually orients the craft this way. And I think that is absolutely just fun. Just fun. And we're preparing to cut our parachute as soon as we splash down into the ocean. Well, all right. Let's do a quick uh, mission recap here. We made it into orbit aboard the Titan II inside of the Gemini spacecraft. We uh, ensured we could correctly and efficiently do attitude and translation control. Well, attitude. We didn't really need to do any translation control. And then set ourselves up for a quick EVA to grab a backpack of mystery components, save for more EVA fuel and get it back into the capsule. During that extravehicular activity operation, the Gemini started to tumble, but we were still able to enter the spacecraft perfectly fine and come back at the appropriate time. Let's actually take a look at the map view where it appears uh, the Earth is all water <laughs> and no land. It is impossible to verify how easily I could land at uh, in the Gulf of Mexico uh, with this situation. So I'm maybe next flight we'll try landing in the Gulf of Mexico just for the hell of it. But it appears I'm not able to very accurately determine when that will be. <laughs> Other than that, we flew up, we did our mission. Now we've come home, getting ready to cut our main parachute here and splash down. Roger that. Feel free to continue playing. Yeah, we're going to continue.
Not bad, not bad. Preparing for recovery, we are all in good shape. Roger that. Oh, that's great. You know what? Let's get some fresh air. Yeah. Let's, let's get some fresh air in this cockpit. We're basically in a big boat at the moment. Uh oh, we're getting water in the capsule now. Maybe not a good idea. <laughs> I believe recovery teams would come by and oh god, we flipped! <laughs> Holy... <laughs> this was probably not a good idea. This... Uh, this, well, I mean, we are still in space suits, but we've completely fried the spacecraft at this point. I'm pretty sure all of this would just die, right like that. Um, and we may not, uh, be able to sustain this kind of attitude in the water. This might kill us. Welcome home. What's the score again? <laughs> oh, I love that banter. I'll see what the debrief this is MCC sending out. Recovery will take over, and recovery has one hell of a job to do now that we've flipped the capsule and flooded it with water. <laughs> but anyways, that concludes this video of Gemini and Reentry and Orbital Simulator. Up next, I assume, is even better things. <laughs> I'm excited for any sort of rendezvous or docking that the game might throw at us next. So until then, I thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out.